Hello everyone. I'm here with some sad news today. You have probably heard of Dr. Ellsworth Wareham if you are vegan. He lived to be 104 and he just passed away this past Saturday, December 15th. He was exemplary as a vegan uh, showing that you can live well, healthily, and for decades on nothing but a plant-based diet. And he was also an exemplary surgeon. He was a heart surgeon until the age of 96. That's when he retired. Can you believe it? And I'm not sure if I've said this explicitly or, or not, but I do plan to do a video about this. Uh, Dr. Ellsworth Wareham was a Seventh-day Adventist, and that is my religion. That's how I was raised. That's the church I always attended. That's the church I still attend. Not always, but that's the church I go to when I go. Um, and what I want to do a video about is how Adventists have long advocated for plant-based nutrition. Now, not so much sort of where I am in certain regions, and definitely the Caribbean Adventists have eaten their meat, but the Adventists are the ones who have really helped to lead the way even for veganism. That's something I started to learn when I became vegan. Okay, there was like a little glitch there for a second. But anyway, so I want to do a video at some point about Adventists and plant-based living and veganism because so many people believe that as Christians, God said we should be eating animals. And the Adventists present a different view. And I'll get into why in the video I do. But right now, let's talk about Ellsworth Wareham. If you want to read this article in its entirety, you can go to AdventistReview.org and uh, look it up. But um, the Loma Linda Seventh-day Adventists uh, are the only Blue Zone in North America. And Ellsworth Wareham was a member of that group. Um, you know, it's one of the things we talk about with plant-based living, you know, <laughs> the proof is in the pudding. This is the only blue zone in North America and other blue zones around the world eat mostly plant-based diets. And Ellsworth Wareham was a vegan for well over 50 years. So I'm just going to read some of the article here. It says, Ellsworth Wareham, known at the end of his life as much for his vegan-supported longevity as his distinguished surgical career, which included the first open-heart surgeries in many countries, died Sabbath, Saturday, December 15th, 2018, at the age of 104. An ebullient and active centenarian, Wareham, a 1942 surgical graduate of Loma Linda University, then known as the College of Medical Evangelists, gained global fame through numerous media outlets in his later years for being the epitome of a Blue Zone resident, someone who lives in one of the healthiest parts of the world. According to a 2008 article in National Geographic magazine, Wareham epitomized the Seventh-day Adventist lifestyle of a vegan diet, exercise, and faith in God, all of which the physician cited as reasons for his longevity. I think it's important for an individual to have some security and peace in his life, Wareham told Dr. Oz in 2008. And I get that from believing in a loving, caring God. And so, if he's in charge of my life, why sit around and worry? I mean, he takes care of the universe. He can certainly take care of me, so I don't worry. During his medical career, Wareham performed more than 12,000 operations and continued to assist and observe younger surgeons until he was in his mid-90s. At 100, he still drove his car and continued to do his own gardening and lawn maintenance, living in a two-story house he and his wife of 68 years, Barbara, shared. Now, one thing that meat eaters will often say is, well, I have a grandmother who lived to be 95, and she ate meat every day, and she, or she ate how many eggs, and so forth. But a lot of times, those people are living and not fully well. They're on medications. They are not necessarily um, independent. They're not necessarily active. And Ellsworth Wareham, at 100 years old, was still active. And clearly, um, he was a picture of health. You know, we can't live forever. That is the sad thing. So a vegan diet is not going to keep the clock going for you till two, three, four hundred years. You know, we are going to die at some point. But if you're going to live a long life, you want to live it well. You want to be relatively healthy. You want to be mobile. You don't want to be, as I've seen some people in horrible states, where who wants to live in a wheelchair and your brain isn't functioning well and so forth. I mean, these are some bad states some people can end up with in the end. But 
Ellsworth Wareham, and I believe firmly his good, healthy vegan diet really helped him live very well. So perhaps his greatest medical accomplishment came in the early 60s when the administration of President John F. Kennedy was trying to improve relations with many nations, including Pakistan. A visit there by the then BP, Lyndon B. Johnson, led to a young Pakistani girl being brought to the White Memorial Hospital in Los Angeles for open-heart surgery. That visit led, in turn, to an invitation from Johnson's office for Wareham to go to Karachi, also home to an Adventist hospital, and perform surgeries there. Speaking with Loma Linda University health historian Richard Schaefer in 2002, Wareham recalled his answer to the vice president's official request. Well, if you pay our way, pay for shipping, and our equipment will go. There were just six of us. We went. We took our heart-lung machine and all the supplies, and we got over there. At the time, Wareham recalled Pakistani Muslims didn't want to give blood. They equated it with the same thing as sacrificial bloodletting. We got military people from the U.S. Embassy. We took this machine and primed it with blood and used the same blood on the patient in the morning and the afternoon. And if they were the same blood types, if they were the same blood types, sorry, first time I'd ever heard that done, that's how they got started. The surgeries did much to enhance the image of the U.S. in those days, and the Loma Linda University health surgeons, Schaefer noted, went on to do additional work in Asia before their return. The team performed more surgeries in India and Thailand, Christian Medical College and Hospital in Vellore, South India, and at Siriyaj University Medical School in Bangkok, Thailand. Altogether, they saw 400 patients and performed 55 surgeries. Uh, Schaefer also wrote that Loma Linda University oversees heart surgery team, a highly specialized group of heart surgeons, surgery experts, has now performed surgery in Pakistan, India, Thailand, Taiwan, Greece, Vietnam, Saudi Arabia, Hong Kong, Ken Kenya, Zimbabwe, the People's Republic of China, Chile, North Korea, and the Kingdom of Nepal. Wherever they go, they either initiate or upgrade open heart surgery programs. So, you know, it goes on to talk a bit more about his accomplishments. He's certainly, oh my goodness, what a distinguished and well-accomplished man, as well as seeming like one of the nicest guys. If you saw him interviewed, he just seems so nice and warm. Um... If you want, again, if you want to read this, you can read more, read the entire article at AdventistReview.com. I'm just going to skip over some of this here. Okay. Wareham was spe specially cited as the quintessential example of the blue zone by many authors. This was his diet, exercise program, sense of community, sense of humor. Yeah, he really does have that. And spirituality-based approach to life contributed to his centenarian status. He'll be greatly missed. Okay, so there's more. He was born on October 3rd, 1914, in the East Texas town of Avenger, a way station en route to the Texas-Louisiana border, one of six children. Um, both his parents were Seventh-day Adventists when Elham, Ellsworth was born. Okay, uh, oh, there's a point here where they relocated to Alberta, Canada when he was six years old. Okay, and didn't have a lot, large family. He grew up in the Depression, okay. Wow, wheat sold for 30 cents a bushel, okay. Anyway, uh, let's just say, let's just continue on here. Sorry, guys. It was when I was out of school that the definite conviction came upon me that I should take up medicine, Wareham said. I might say that it was as strong as hunger. It wasn't just a vague idea. There was no other option. It wasn't whether I had the money or didn't have the money or how I would accomplish it. I had to accomplish it, no matter what it took to do. My credits were such that I had to take extra coursework because I didn't have my pre-med sciences in order. So I had to go back and take additional work, although it was the same level. I only had what would be the equivalent of two years of college. Uh, but Wareham served as a surgeon during the closing period of World War II, working on a ship near the Philippines. He did more training in Los Angeles, New York, and Minneapolis, uh, and he developed skills as uh, general surgery, thoracic surgery, and finally cardiac surgery. During one of his resident surgical residencies, Wareham met Barbara, then a young nurse whom he married in 1950. The Warehams had had five children. In 2008, he also told. Oh, Sorry, in 2008, Doc, 
In an interview with Dr. Oz, Barbara, his wife, admitted that she was not anxious for her husband to ever retire. People ask me that a lot, and I say, leave him alone, he's happy, she said. I don't think he'd be nearly so happy just sitting at home. In 2014, Loma Linda University honored Wareham with a reception noting his 100th birthday and the creation of the Ellsworth E. Wareham Global Service and Education Fund. Survivors include his wife, Barbara, children, John, Martin, Robert, and Julie, eight grandchildren, and six great-grandchildren. His son Scott preceded him in death in 2015, and a memorial service will be held for him at 11 a.m. on Sunday, December 30th at the Loma Linda University Church, and if I were in the area, I would definitely attend. So as I said, it's, you know, we can't live forever, but there's still a sadness that comes when someone dies. I mean, I just look at that warm happy face and you know that the people in his life are going to miss him no matter how many years they had him and the fantastic thing is that he's leaving a legacy of being such a good person and being um, such a, a skilled doctor who did so many incredible things and also being an advocate and inspiration uh, for veganism you know, just by living, living kindly, living the plant-based life as a vegan and showing just how powerful it is. People think you're going to die in a year or six months as a vegan. People often say, oh, I tried being vegan and I got sick. Well, you know what? <laughs> it's just not true. We can live happily and healthily as vegans. And Ellsworth Wareham was a true example of that. So, you know, um, may he rest in peace and it's a sad moment, but a very, you know, it's a good moment. A good moment for us to be able to reflect and honor a man like him. And to know that if he could do it, we can do it. And that's all I have to say, guys. Hit me up with your comments. How do you feel? Do you believe that um, you can live as happily and healthily as Ellsworth Wareham did. I mean, I know I can, and that's what I strive for. And uh, that's all for now. I'll see you guys in the next video.